Looking at vital signs that indicate climate change, we are working on the back of our evidence for climate change and global warming. And we're going to read about evidence of climate change. And then you're going to make a new question that's related to this vital sign about climate change or global warming. So your first vital sign on the top left-hand side of your paper is global temperature rise. So global temperature rising, which is this part right here. So you're going to take some notes from this. Okay, and I'll read it to you. And you just write down whatever you feel is important that supports that the global temperature is rising in that middle piece that is called evidence of climate change. It says the planet's average surface temperature has risen about two degrees Fahrenheit or one degree Celsius since the late 19th century, a change driven largely by increased carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere and other human activities. Most of the warming occurred in the past 40 years, with the seven most recent years being the warmest. The years 2016 and 2020 are tied for the warmest year on record. Now, what you want to do is you want to push this plus button to read more if you need more evidence. So we're going to push it and see it where it takes us. And so there are some pictures here. So I just read this piece to you. And we're going to look at different vital signs. So one of them is Earth's vital signs, global temperature. And so it gives you a picture of the temperatures, right, over the years, the last maybe, I don't know, 100 years, okay? And it's just definitely rising, right? Here's 1940, pretty high. 1960, pretty high. 1980, the rise is 0 0.2. 2000, the rise is about 0 0.4. We're way up here. That's a huge temperature rise. Okay, so let's look at um, this button. It says more. And it gives us, it shows us um, some scientists actually measuring um, global temperature. And what we look at to measure global temperature is thermometer readings. You see here it will tell you exactly what year and what temperature it was. It's kind of cool to drag this around. You can check it out. All right, I'm going to back up. So now on your um, global temperature rise, the question that I asked was, example, what kinds of things are humans doing that contribute to global warming? That's a new question. Now I'm going to look at warming oceans. So the ocean is getting warmer. So here's the evidence. Maybe you took some notes in your middle column. Here's some information. You decide what notes to put there. It says the ocean has absorbed much of this increased heat, which the top 100 meters, about 328 feet, of ocean showing a warming of 0 0.767 degrees Fahrenheit and 0 0.33 degrees Celsius. There's the evidence right there. There's the temperature. It has risen since 1969. Earth stores 90% of the extra energy in the oceans. So that's your evidence. We're going to look and see if we need any more evidence. It says the ocean is getting warm, warmer. There's a video about sea level rise. There's a resource about what's happening in the oceans. Basically, Earth's minute, the sea level rise, it talks about how all water um, travels. Okay, as it warms up, there's an article about warming oceans. We've got ice melting, right? There are observations from 11 satellites monitoring the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. And those regions are losing six times faster ice, six times faster than they were in the 1990s. So warmer seas means melting ice. So if you look back at your paper where it says warming oceans, evidence of climate change, there's some evidence. There's some evidence of releasing heat into the atmosphere. There's some evidence um, where the sea level is going up and what kinds of things are affected in this video. And we're talking about pure, just temperatures. Those, that's solid evidence, solid measurements of the ocean getting warmer. So in your third column, it says, new question related to a vital sign about climate change or global warming. In that third column, now that you've seen the evidence that the ocean is getting warmer, write a question that you have 
about the ocean getting warmer that is related to the ocean getting warmer, but that cannot be answered by this website. So now that you know that the ocean is getting warmer, what question do you have about the ocean warming? Write it in that third column. I'm going to go back to the ice sheet, the main page. We're going to talk about shrinking ice sheets. So here's the evidence. The ice sheets are shrinking. The Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets have decreased in mass, so they're getting smaller. Data from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment show Greenland lost an average of 279 billion tons of ice per year between 1993 and 2019, while Antarctica lost about 148 billion tons of ice per year. So there's evidence right there that the ice sheets are shrinking. If you want more, you can push this plus button. But from this evidence, can you think of what might be important? So there's more evidence here, and it says um, an indicator of the current volume in Antarctica and Greenland ice sheets using data from NASA's GRACE satellite. So they're measuring the area of ice. And look at there's lots of ice. Less ice, less ice, less ice, less ice. They must not have a measurement for here. Something probably happened. I don't know. Maybe it's just a glitch or they didn't um, get data or maybe it's right on the line. Um, but less ice, less ice, and here we are right now. And the change is 273 billion metric tons per year that the change has happened with the ice. If you want to look at more, there's... A global ice viewer, it's like a picture of where is the ice. And there's kind of a cool um, quiz that you can take about the frozen poles. All right, so now we're going to cover glaciers are retreating. Here's the evidence. So glaciers are retreating almost everywhere around the world. What that means is that glaciers are actually shrinking, right? So including the Alps, Himalayas, Andes, Rockies, Alaska, and Africa. So we're going to click on more evidence so you can take some notes. And this is actually pretty interesting. This shows the same picture we just looked at. And there's a global ice viewer. This is actually pretty interesting to look at. Um, if we look at the interactive, um, let me see if I can get there. Oh, click on the more. This is crazy. Look at this glaciers pictures, like where they are. Let's look at the one in the United States. Here's the Rocky Mountains. Here's the same glacier. Check this out. This is in 1898, so like 100 years ago, and 203. So here's the size of this glacier, very thick ice. And here's what it looks like at the same time of year, in the same place, the same mountain. Look how the ice has shrunk. That's crazy, right? So Greenland and Iceland, you can pick a spot. So if I pick here. We can play a video and it will talk about um, how it's moved. Let's see if it shows us. 250 feet difference here. I'm going to go back to our main page. Oh, didn't mean to go there. We'll go back to our evidence. Scrolling down. So now with the glaciers retreating, under glacial retreat, you want to find on the right-hand side a new question. You develop a new question that you have about the glaciers retreating on that third column in your worksheet. I'm going to go over the decreased snow cover that's here. Satellite observations reveal that the amount of spring snow over the, in the northern hemisphere has decreased over the past five decades and the snow is melting earlier. So if you click on more, you see the same picture. So there um, just has some archives here for you to check out about polar snow. And you can explore the data and the research. Always interesting to look at. So what does that mean? So ask your question in the third column. The next one is sea level is rising. This is the evidence. The sea level is rising. So in your third, is your second column, your evidence of climate change is that the global sea level rose about eight inches in the last century, which is 100 years. The rate in the last two decades, however, is nearly double that of the last century and accelerating slightly every year. You can click here and see more if you want. Um, 
Arctic sea ice is declining. So declining Arctic sea ice on your paper. You need evidence of it. This says both the extent and thickness of Arctic sea ice has declined rapidly over the last several decades, but it doesn't really give us any solid evidence. So let's look at some solid evidence. Um, let's see, here's some solid evidence right here. Annual September minimum extent. So these are observations of sea ice. There's some sea ice here, more, less, more, less, more, less. But look at, here's where the sea ice was in 1980s. And here's where it is right about now, 2020 maybe. So less sea ice, even on an uptake, it's still less than the smallest amount in the last 30 years. Pretty interesting. Let's see if there's a picture here of sea ice. Let's go and see if we can check it out. Mm, nope, they're just talking about how it... Uh, they're just talking about how they watch it. Extreme events are increasing frequency. This is actually kind of crazy. I don't know if you guys listened to the news today. The extreme events are increasing in frequency. The amount of snow being dumped in Nevada and California is unbelievable. Feet of snow right now. They're telling people not to travel. Um, and these are places that don't get feet of snow. Um, so... It says the number of record high temperature events in the United States has been increasing while the number of record low temperature events has been decreasing. So this is definitely evidence for climate change. Um, the U.S. has witnessed increasing numbers of intense rainfall events. You notice the more rainfall events, it's happening. You can look here for more information. So on the right hand side, on the extreme events, make sure that you come up with a question that you have that cannot be answered by this website about extreme events. So what are extreme events, right? So what are they? They are precipitation, right? Oh my gosh, look at all this rain, right? Interesting. Let's see if it gives us some more inter information. No, um, here we go. So NASA is using satellites to measure Earth's rain and snowfall. Um, and they're looking for measurements of how much is falling, of course, of precipitation on Earth? So, wow, check this out. This is the latest half an hour of Earth's precipitation. Um, and you can watch it on the video here. Looks like it, it m might be short, but look at how the rain moves, you guys. This is pretty awesome. The wind is blowing the rain, of course, so that's how we know where it's moving. But we know where it is. You see the time is ticking over here in the actual, literal, last half an hour on Earth. Pretty cool. The blue is snow, right? And the rain is green. And extreme weather is these red areas where there's intense thunderstorms. See this swirling going on? Sometimes you get a giant storm from that. That's actually going to move inland, and we're going to get some actual storms happening in the west. The last box that you have on the bottom of your paper talks about acid, uh, sorry, ocean acidification is increasing. So the acidity of surface ocean waters has increased by about 30%. The increase is due to humans emitting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and more being absorbed into the ocean. So what does this actually mean? There are actual numbers here for you to write down. But there actually is a group of kids right now um, dissolving eggshells with acid. And why is this a problem? This is a problem because all of the creatures in the ocean that you can think of that might have shells will now have difficulty actually growing a shell because it's so acidic in the ocean. Or their shells will break down and not be so strong, right? So if you remember how in the very beginning part of science, we looked at how populations worked and how one, taking one population of one specific creature out can affect all the rest of them. There you have it. So climate change also affects coral reefs, and coral reefs are a big deal. Um, this is a graphic about how increased greenhouse gases from human activities result in climate change and acidification. You guys, coral reefs are dying. 
all over the world. And this is a big deal for coral reefs because they are the basis of the food chains in the oceans, okay? So all of these things for climate change, the warming ocean, the sea level rise, the changes in storm patterns, the changes in precipitation, okay? Lots more pollutants. Remember, everything ends up in the ocean or surface water, like in lakes. And so it doesn't go anywhere after the ocean, right? Stays there, changes the currents <coughs> and the levels of acidification. So um, this is actually pretty interesting to look at. So today, you wanna look at that third column. You want to develop new questions that you have now because you just did a ton of research regarding global climate change and evidence that it's actually happening. Finish that third column and then 